Join your fellow Starseeds, Lightworkers, and Experiencers at the 2024 Full Disclosure Now Conference, this July 15th to 18th. This conference will be a fun and positively life-changing experience for so many. In addition to four days and nights of presentations, there will be special event dinners, dancing, fun time on the beach, UFO night watch tours, film screenings, vendors, and more at the lovely Serata Beach Resort on St. Pete Beach, Florida. Over 34 Montauk Project survivors, secret space program whistleblowers, ET contactees, and psychic healers will be presenting in the name of the Full Disclosure Movement. The truth must be revealed if we're all to achieve our Star Trek future here and now. Get your event passes and book your stay now at fulldisclosuremovement.org. You want to learn about CE5, an extraterrestrial contact? Download my new book, now on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple, and 14 other platforms. Book authored by Donald Ledesma. CE5 Frequencies of Contact. This is Mike Beavers from The Theory, and you are listening to Alien Strand Podcast, the dopest UFO alien podcast out there. And if you want to find out about me, just go on YouTube and search UFOs over UFO or The Theory with Mike Beavers. Stay tuned, guys. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Alien Strand Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Desma, and welcome to today's show. Well... We had a live show here a little while, about 30 minutes ago on uh, X and on Instagram, and I thought it was pretty important, right? So, you know, uh, it's recorded, of course, and uh, I, I brought out a lot of good points, things like that. I know there's videos that you can't see, but, you know, I, I'm bringing up a lot of good points on ufology, right? And uh, I just thought that it's important for you guys to listen to that podcast uh, as you're listening to right now on audio because you're on Spreaker Live, right? And, of course, you're going to catch us on uh, iHeartRadio, Spotify, all those other good ones. But you can actually see the video on YouTube. You can watch us on X. You can watch us on Instagram. That's where exactly where these things were taking place live, man. Uh, and go check that out. So there's going to be links to everything after this podcast is over on this podcast. I hope you guys are having an amazing day enjoying your day today uh keeping your eyes in the skies of course and just you know watching out for you ufos and everything out there so i did get into a pretty good uh topic of discussion of ufo world and it's going to be a pre-recorded uh podcast so uh, i'm going to go ahead and play it for you guys so you you guys won't hear me live but you're going to be hearing me past live right well we're just talking that we'll just talk, we'll just say that right so uh anyway don't forget to catch my new book ce5 frequencies of contact you heard it at the beginning of this podcast and you will hear it at the very end of the podcast so catch it there as well and uh, i hope you guys really enjoy the content that's coming out of alien strand podcast put us up there on the list we really appreciate it share follow on instagram uh x on youtube and on patreon go to our patreon page man we're posting a lot of stuff on that page it's for free. Uh, you'll see links to it on all my links. Go there and click on our Patreon. Join for free. Can't beat it, man. All right. Until further ado, let's go ahead and get this past podcast on now. Here we go. Hey, 
Hi, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Alien Strand Podcast, and welcome to this special episode here on, we are live on X, and we are live on Instagram only. You know what? This is for you guys today. Um, Today, we're going to be talking about UFO World. Uh, Thank you guys for just kind of chiming in a little bit. Uh, I had a little bit of time on my hands, so I decided to just get this podcast out. You know, I've been... uh, uh, working on a lot of stuff and working on my new book now. And, uh, you know, it just takes a lot of time away from me. And then, of course, getting the new film. You just saw the, the preview to that it was called The Middle Part 2, okay? The Middle Part 1 is on YouTube or Tubi TV. Go check it out. And then that way you can catch up to The Middle 2 there on Skylight 1 channel. Uh, you can see it there. It's uh, we're still waiting on, on uh, the Amazon Prime video for them to uh, release it on their platform man but thank you guys for for watching today you know to uh, uh, you know i have some announcements of course we are we're going to be live on patreon as well catch us on patreon you know we're going to have merch there our past podcast that we had before ufa uh, ufo news uh signals astro meetings um and like with miss vivian charbet i don't know if you've heard of, uh, heard of her go check that out on patreon um and, it, and it's for free man so last week I, I put this podcast out that i quit right which was, I really did not quit. I just quit some platforms. The only reason because, you know, as ufology comes out and all these new uh, people that are that are bringing out more disclosure every day that, um, you know, they're just kind of getting weeded out, man, or, or, or put to the side or or these uh, these platforms are kind of bringing their, their levels down to where you can't see them, right? That's exactly what was happening to me, right? And, I mean, I would put hashtags, everything you can think, you know, the SEOs, everything you can do for Google, Nobody has been seeing my stuff. And I was like, you know what? I've been throwing it out every day, right? So what is the issue? The issue is disclosure. That is the issue. That's why I put that out there for you guys. Go check that out. That's on Patreon as well. And I believe on our YouTube. So if you can, go to our YouTube page. Uh, follow us on our YouTube. You'll see that it's that uh, insignia there right there on the left uh, on our YouTube page. Subscribe. Give us a like. We have a lot of free stuff. The, the middle part one is on there as well. Go check it out there. And we uh, go check us out on Patreon. Sign up for free. It's free. Alien Strand Podcast. And um, I got off of Facebook, man. And I know I'm Instagram. I know Instagram is part of uh, Facebook. But, you know, uh, I just needed to get more information out, you know. And I kept on getting flagged for everything, man. I'm like, come on, man. It's it's my music. I paid for it. I bought everything. But, hey, it is what it is. We have to go forward. But make sure to follow us uh, on there. Like I said, today's podcast, UFO World. I'm going to show you some pictures today, and I'm going to show you some videos, all right? So this is the stuff that just came out uh, here recently, this week, as a matter of fact. I should have called it UAP News, but it's UFO World because... You know, right now, a lot of this stuff is happening only, happening only in a certain part of the world, which I think it's a major hotspot. And you're going to see why, right? I'm going to show you why here shortly, you know. Um, of course, catch my ebook. It's a small guidebook. Go check it out. It's on uh, Amazon Kindle, or you can get it on Barnes & Noble. Go check it out. It's a guidebook to have in your pocket. You know, it shows you how to see five. If you don't know how to do that, it'll, it will show you how to do that, all right? So... Pretty simple, real cheap. It's only like three ninety nine, man. Put it on your Kindle or download the Kindle app on your iPhones or whatever. If you got iPhone, download it. Go read that little. It's a short little book. It'll take you two hours to read it all, right? But if you like to see five, it's a great book to do that, right? Give me some uh, reviews if you like it. it. Has a lot of, uh, you know, it's definitions, a lot of stuff that people need to know about CE five. It's in there, right? Of course, ASTP, follow us out uh, there because where there's no uh, IN team, right? We all work together. Uh, it's ASTPUFO-hyphen.com if you want to report a UFO. We got people all over the world, man. All over the world actually uh, involved in that in Australia and the United Kingdom. You know, we have people in Ireland. We have people in Africa. We have people everywhere, uh, even in Mexico, right? Which we are going to bring up today, right? Because today is a day that we need to bring up uh, what's happening out there, right? Um, like I said, you just saw the the uh, commercial to the middle part two like i said uh it's we have a tetralogy right so we had the middle part one part two is out now part three i'm going to release this month and then i'm still working on part four okay so we're going to get all those out for you guys uh you need to watch this man because it's all disclosed not just because they're my films man but i mean i'm starting to throw them out there for free now i keep the prices super low so you guys can watch them you know it's it costs you a bag of chips and and a coke man you know well you can't beat that with a stick i keep them real cheap now If you guys don't know what I've been doing lately on the side, other than my book and my films, I do have a channel. It's a web-based TV channel, right? So you can watch a lot of uh, UFO documentaries, uh, Bigfoot documentaries, things like that. So, and it's called Skylight One, right? 
Uh, you can follow their uh, Skylight channel right now. This week we're, we're, we're doing, I don't know if you've seen the, this, it's called Dust Sci-Fi. Go, they have a lot of uh, like 30, 40 minute, you know, segments of films, right? Excellent films, man. So I put them on Skylight Movie Channel. I'll put a link to it uh, after this podcast. Go check it out on Skylight Movie and it's free TV, all right? It's web-based. So you'd have to look at it through your phone and, and mirror it to your TV or go to your computer. That's how I do it. I check out and I, and I got it full right now with a program, man. So it's got three channels, one paranormal, one for movie and one for UFOs. All right. So go check those out. Um, and I, I just I put this out because it's it's informative. Right. A lot of this is informative. Now, let's talk about some UFOs. Right. So lately, uh, we've been seeing a lot of new stuff come out uh, on ufology and, and uh, UFOs on our on our um uh, you know, social media pages like this one, right? Instagram, X, whatever you have, Facebook, it all comes out, right? So this one recently popped up, right? And this was, uh, they were taking a picture of the moon. I'm going to blow it up just so you don't see my awful face uh, right there, okay? So they were just taking a picture of the moon, very nice photos. Check it out, man. And uh, if you notice, there's this red dot on the right side of the moon, and then it, it hovers off to the left side. Now, when they were taking this photo, they're like, well, wait a minute, you know what? I'm catching something here. And, you know, um, so what I did was I I use my phone like everybody else does, uh, or you can use your computer. I enhanced that photo, that little red dot on the very top, right? And lo and behold, it had a bunch of lights on it, right? So that's what you're seeing there on the left, on the photo on the left. So I enhanced it with my cell. Check it out. I mean, it's it's an amazing, uh, I try to, if you, if you, if you clarify it too much or you put too much clarity in it, it'll pixelate, right? Which it actually did right there. But I wanted you to see that you can see like there's five lights or six lights in the very top and two lights on the bottom, right? Where have we seen this before? This UFO has actually been uh, been pictured in a lot of different places. Now, if you notice on the right, the picture on the right, uh, the UFO has now moved a little closer to the left of the photo. So we know this thing is hovering. It's not an airplane. Okay, we all know that. Um, and, uh, just by the enhancement of the photos, you could tell what it is now, you know, as I talked about earlier about Mexico, right? A lot of these, um, images and, and UFO photos and, and have been happening in Mexico a lot. And somebody uploaded this photo today. As a matter of fact, I, I shared it on a bunch of groups and, and of course on alien strands, closure project page, even on alien strand page on Facebook and Instagram, everywhere. I chase the shit everywhere. Right. So you get the point. And, uh, I'm going to show you this photo. Check this out, man. And, uh, look at this. I mean, whatever kind of camera they use. And, and I'm telling you, it's not CGI because I, what, what, uh, I do, I do do photography as well. And there's a, a, it's called a slow shutter speed photography, right? And what you're trying to do on these photos is, you, is you're trying to capture the Milky Way in the background, right? So while they were doing this, they captured this image of this UFO or this craft that was actually hovering over these uh, spherical, these uh, rocks, like look like pillars almost in a sense, right? Kind of looks that way. And um, it was, uh, it was actually emulating some kind of light underneath now if you can see the picture on the right it's giving some kind of light on the actual rock itself right and it's doing the same thing uh in the center picture you're getting a bigger bigger view and on the left photo right so i mean i was able to bring this up just a little bit so you guys can see it a little bit better and this is a slick like, like slow shutter speed photography they use it for astrophotography uh in order to get the now, what happens, what you're trying to do is you're trying to just slow your shutter speed. So in other words, like, you know, your, your regular camera just goes, right? And it's fast, right? That's good. Because what that does, it captures a clear image. Like, like you see, like you see my hand looks kind of, um, it's blurry. Okay. So when you do a fast shutter speed, it looks clear, right? But when you do a super, super slow shutter speed, when it's going click, and then it takes this long for it to, to open the shutter and then this long to close. So it's bringing in all the light as possible, right? So when you're doing that, this is how you're getting these photos. Uh, if you're really into it, I would really look it up, how to do these kind of, uh, that kind of photography. And um, w what happens when something is moving? Now, this thing uh, luckily was still. Uh, but if it was moving, it would have made like a line of some sort. It would have looked like, you know how there's photos of cars when they're going and all you see is a bunch of lines? That's what happens, right? If there's something moving. So this thing was a still object, right? That was hovering there. 
and they were happy to get it, uh, uh, you know. And I could tell this is a, a really nice uh, camera that they use. You, it's kind of hard to do with these uh, cell phones now these days. I mean, maybe the newer ones now. Hey, I don't know. I don't have the new one. I st- I'm still I'm still jacking with the 11, man. This is the 11 Pro. I still have it. It still works. Hey, why? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's how I see it. So, um, you know, and I need to get with the times. Really, really. <laughs> I need to get with the times. But on top of that, I want to show you a... Um, a, a uh, a video that popped up here i showed it on the last podcast but I've, i found it so amazing that you have to see this thing man it somebody recorded this clear as day and uh, check this out um and, and it, it, you can just kind of see it how it, it they're watching this thing in real time and close by and close by watch it's just- And this thing is literally flying over the over the houses, close by. That's got some pretty cool music. Now, right like, there's a great shot. I, I stopped the footage. Right, it's a great shot of that UFO in flight. Now, if you can see in the very bottom of this flight uh, of, of this UFO, very bottom. I'm going to try to blow it up a little bit without seeing my beautiful face there. Um, so. Look at the very bottom. You see that little round thing? Now, these UFO uh, crafts that look like this, majority of the times are going to have one to three of these uh, spherical-looking objects in the bottom. And, and uh, we think those are like wavelength generators that are at the very bottom, like Bob Lazar talked about, right? What they do is they kind of they, they, they push this, this uh, electronic magnetic field of some sort, right, in the bottom of, of the, 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 the ground, the Earth, right? And, and it helps it stay above float now this thing's actually floating really nice without a wobble right so it has a really nice balance to it i've seen some to where they wobble and me personally i just think that when it does this that it when it starts wobbling that you know like on a boat i don't know if you've ever been a boat they have like a throttle right even like on airplanes so when you throttle back it doesn't have enough power to the stability to keep it afloat, right? And the electronic magnetic fields are on it, you know, whatever they use, the element 115. I don't know how that generator works, but it works, right? So, and and we think that this thing is actually not fully powered down because I'm gonna I'm gonna play the video some more so you can see, see it keep going. See that? Now you see them. And it goes behind the building. So as this thing is, is cruising behind this building, I mean, it's a great shot. It is not CGI. I actually enhanced it a little bit uh, because it, was, it wasn't it was as clear as I wanted it to be. So and I did this with my cell phone. I did it with my cell phone. You could, man, you so many wonders you could do with your cell phones now these days. It's unbelievable. So, I mean, uh, as I back off the video, you can see exactly how this thing was in flight. So smooth. Uh, it's not a drone. Come on, man. Uh this thing clearly if you can see that right there you can almost see the electronic magnetic field around it almost there's another words, there's a little field around the whole craft right if you follow your little line around it you'll see it and most ufos do have that right as they're in in flight right and that's what we need to understand how these things work right um, i've been studying these things for a bit with mr terry lynch and, um, you know, he, he says that they're used uh, flux tubes that are inside of this thing, like a wave basket, which keeps it uh, afloat, right? And uh, we know now, uh, I don't know if you guys saw the video of uh, uh, Juanito Juan out of Mexico. Now, mind you, a lot of these videos are coming from Mexico. <laughs> they are coming from Mexico. It is a super freaking hot spot. Now, if you see the uh, uh, Popocatapel, uh, the volcano, that live volcano that's always spewing Every day, right? They're catching these UFO crafts. These all over the place, all over the freaking place, right? And uh, it's it's um, and it's going over this volcano and going inside of it. You've seen some go in and out of it, right? Why is there a hot spot in Mexico, man? I mean, something is going on in that general area to to uh, know that why these things are there. Now, I don't know if you if you saw this before, but uh, this photo right here was taken actually in Mexico again. Here we go in Mexico again. Great hot spot, you know, uh, and they were just capturing the, the moon and they 
happened to capture this UFO craft that was flying by, right? And, uh, you know, they enhanced the photo a little bit. They did this. I didn't. Uh, but you can pretty much tell that there is a crap because you can see the electronic magnetic field around this thing on the bottom right photo if you're looking at it right in, in the in the video today right uh now if you're listening to audio it's it's just there's a ufo craft at night you know people were taking a picture of the moon over the city bam there you go and then they caught this nice large craft and it's huge if you kind of look at the moon look at i know the, the it's i know the science behind it but i know it's not as big as the moon but uh, if you look at the, the city below it, because the city is not very far below it, that it's a great um, it's a great indication of how big this thing is. So it's going to be bigger than a bus, you know, probably bigger than a, than a, than a large 747 airplane. It, it's going to be huge, maybe bigger than a C-130. Hey, you know, it's going to be big to to show itself that far uh, above the city, uh, the line. Right. And uh you know these these photos are just are just getting more and more every day. If you if you're into ufology like I am, uh, and a lot of our colleagues are, that you know these are the things that we study every day, right? And these are the things that we look for every day uh, as far as UFOs, not just the UFOs, man, but what's piloting these things, right? We're always thinking about ooh UFO, ooh UFO, ooh UFO, but we just never think of what's driving that ufo there's a pilot inside of there right um and you know why not there be a pilot you know uh and i think i me personally maybe 90 percent uh out of 100 there's going to be a pilot the the spherical ones that you see that look like a sphere uh those are basically probably going to be drones now we have seen pictures of sometimes there's a glass on them some kind of a window where you can actually see the, the the small extraterrestrial that's inside, right? And you're, we some people have some really nice uh, tools, AI tools that can almost make out what's inside of there, right? And that's what it's a great thing about technology. The bad part, it, it might manipulate something. In other words, your technology might not be as it'll get close to it, but it won't be the thing. Okay. Instead of me rambling, I'm going to show you something, right? So this photo popped up on the internet yesterday, and I threw it out there, and it's the actual photo on the right. The center one is just an AI, but the the photo on the right, if you're looking at it, check it out, man. So they caught this, I don't know, man, gray. It's green because I believe they use like a night filter. So this is why you're you're seeing this extraterrestrial in this kind of a filter or graph. Um, the one on the left is called the gold, right? So if, if, if you, if you like using apps and there's one out there called V2 art, right? And, uh, you can actually use photos or, or this actually to me came out of a video. You know why I know this? Cause V2 art is a video enhancement tool. So we know there's a video floating out there of this actual, uh, extraterrestrial that you are seeing here because, uh, when you use the gold tool that's there on the left, if you're looking at it, that gold tool never lies. In other words, if it shows up on the gold, it's real, right? And we we know this because we've been using this tool for what two years now. Uh, a good friend of mine, Jody Gordon, she used to live in um, in uh, Colorado. Now she lives in uh, in Arizona, and she showed me that trick of how we can tell if it's CGI or some manipulated kind of thing. To where when we use the gold. Uh, it doesn't show up, right? Uh, but when it does show up, we know it's real, okay? So this is a great way to figure this out, right? If you're trying to, if you enter ufology and learning how to uh, 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 do analysis on a lot of these photos or videos, okay? So, you know, and did this happen in Mexico? I don't know, maybe. It's a possibility, but I know what photo happened in Mexico, right? And it's going to be this one. Bam, right? You see that? So, and I use this extraterrestrial on, on the left and right, the same one, but it's in a different graph now. We're using the green spectrum. Um, but I'm going to blow it up so you don't see my beautiful face there for a minute. Uh, so you see this craft and it's flying by. They were just taking a picture. They didn't even notice that this UFO craft was in the photo until after they went back and looked at it, all right? So this did happen in, in, in Mexico. Uh, and you can see the craft. It's it's going to be saucer shape. 
blah 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 here we go it's it's that that uh that metallic uh faded metallic color that we always see and we're like i said before we're always looking at the extra we're always looking at the craft never the extraterrestrial and this is why i put the photo of the extraterrestrial there to to let you guys understand there is a pilot actually behind this thing right and these things are going in subsonic speeds that we can't even fathom right we, we can't we, we can't we, our planes can't even go that fast you know if we do we pass out right uh, from the inertia right there's going to be inertia or like when these inertia is when when you're inside of a car let's say you're inside of a car and you take off and you step on the gas while well, your whole body pulls back right that's inertia boom or or forward right so there's something some kind of movement inside of uh, inside of the uh, the the vehicle that you're in now there is no inertia inside of these things because these things are still alive, right? So, how is this happening? There's something inside this this craft, inside that is actually making an, a bubble around this craft that we can't see. We can't see it with the naked eye, right? And what Bob Lazar said is that the uh, the element 115, the 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 the, the thing that, that that makes this craft go, um, is in the bottom of this unit, right? And as it's turned up or turned on, uh, it makes a field around this craft to where it bends light, right? So this is why a lot of times we can't we can't see these crafts because it's bending light underneath it. He goes, you can stand underneath it and you won't even see it's there because it's bending the light around it, right? In other words, it looks like a mirror, the Predator. Let's just say like the Predator movie, right? Uh, and this is why a lot of times we're not seeing these. And you can only catch them in spectrum, or you can only catch them with night vision goggles, things like that in a different in a different eye spectrum. There's things that we can't see, right? And uh, I brought that picture to your attention because this is a learning uh, platform here on Alien Strand as well. But I, I want you guys to see that. I want to show you one more video before I take off here. Um, and this one, broad daylight. And this kid was actually just filming. This is a beautiful video, by the way. Check this out. And uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. Check it out. Holy. Oh, my God. Yo, come look at this. Look at that, dude. What is. Holy. Holy. Oh, oh my God. Yo, come look at this. Look at that, dude. What is... Holy... Okay, so you get the logistics of this one, right? And what you don't see is when it's floating there, and this thing's in a tilt, right? And um, and as it's floating there, um, and it takes off, it takes off in this speed that it's in a blink of an eye and pew! it's gone right this thing is freaking gone and uh it, it's like how do you <laughs> you can't it's, you can't even see it if, if, see that i mean if you took your eyes off of it just for a second it's gone completely gone right uh and this is how fast these things move you know there it is for a second you see it's coming across the screen and bam right and he zooms in and pew, you see that uh, it made like it looked like a little stretch uh, while it was going by, right there, right there. So if you're looking at that, uh, I slowed down the video, and uh, you can see how this thing was moving uh, in freaking top speeds, man. Uh, that we can't even think about the inertia. Think about the inertia that's inside of this thing. Right? I just explained to you what that was, right? And uh, if you didn't know what it was, you do know know what it is now, right? So, uh, and that's the great thing about, you know, uh, learning ufology and and learning how things uh, work and how they don't work, right? So, are these things actually contacting us in, in different kind of ways with frequencies and 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 how we're starting to perceive them as frequencies um, with the extraterrestrial contact, right? Yes, yes, I'm a true believer in that. Doctor Stephen Greer said it himself. These things are contacted, contacting us through these frequencies, right? And they're receivable frequencies. And the, you're emitting these frequencies as well. So, the, like, I put the picture there of this, of the petroglyph there because, um, you know, the natives had it right. I've been saying that for years. 
years and years and the natives had it right the whole time now, even even the native before the natives let's just say homo sapiens are, are, are just homo until we became homo sapiens sapiens then we have so, uh, homo erectus right so there's a, a show on, on Netflix right now uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it you have to see this you have to see this show and what it is it's kind of telling you about uh, the Neanderthals right and uh and there was a cave that they found of this 75,000 year old Neanderthal that's in there, right? And uh, it, it, the, the, the place where they found this, they found a lot of different things about what they ate, you know, just by the teeth, the enamel. Uh, they only found a small fraction, a fraction of the skull, right? But they knew it was, it, it, it was that, that sort of people. So, now, just think about this just for a second. And I don't want to take this away from anybody, but, you know, we've been talking about 3,000 years, 2,000 years of the, you know, since the pyramids and man and all that good stuff since the recordings of history, right? So, the the and we've been recording history through petroglyphs and, and, the, and the contact with extraterrestrials, especially with the Hopi Indians, right? They're the ones that came out with the star people. How? Why? Here it is, right? And and this is how you're able to, to realize that you don't need to have this sophisticated technological uh, uh, world in order to contact, right? You, you can be as simple as that. You know, Neanderthals, I'm not, I'm not, maybe they contacted as well, but it's not going to show that in that uh, Netflix documentary, but it's going to show you that there were people back then that had thinking process, right? And it's, and they have the thought process of burial. They have the thought process of life. They have the thought process of everything, right? In general, right? Uh, and, and, and of something out there of a, of a bigger energy than them. Right, and this is what you're going to get out of that that uh, that uh, a documentary. I, I really highly suggest if you're open minded, check it out. It's great. It's a great documentary to see. But to me, it has a lot of connection with contact and the ETs, right? And this is why now I think that uh, I think we, as us as human beings, have actually um, had a more of a, a of an awakening of some sort, right? Let's just call it that. Uh, it's an awakening and. And to where now there's more of these extraterrestrials coming around. Now, I don't know if you guys have noticed if, you, if you're on Google Maps, right? Google Earth. So right there uh, around the, uh, the southern peninsula of, 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 of the Gulf of Mexico and Mexico, there was this, <laughs> if you, if you kind of look down into the ocean on the wall, it looked like a cave with some pillars, right? And you could see that every day on your phone, on Google Earth and Google Maps, everything. You could look and zoom into it and look at it. Now you can't. They smudged it out. Can't see it no more. Hello? Is anybody out there? Hello? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what does that tell you? What does that tell you, man? You know, um, there's something out there more than they want us to know, right? So, and that's right around... Mexico, right? That, that general area, right? So, what is it that they don't want us to know, right? What do you think? These guys? Yeah, I think it's these guys, right? Uh, and, you know, they just they just play a large part and a large role of, of everything in general, right? What they're seeing. Uh, and I, to me, um, it's like these guys, these, I'm talking about the extraterrestrials, the greys, I think they have this I don't give a crap mentality now, Right? Because we're starting to see them more. Before they were kind of hidden away, we weren't seeing them so much. And I know now everybody's got a, 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 a camera in their pockets now, so you can get video of everywhere, which is great. And this is how we're starting to see them more. But I mean, now it's just like, wow, you know, these things are popping out like, you know, everywhere, you know, like everywhere. Are these are the signs of the times of something that's going to be a change, right? I think so, right? How to prepare people to experience something and not giving them the whole picture right away, right? So if you really think about it, what's the best the best way to have people adjust to the extraterrestrial uh, existence, right? And the best way for that is to start showing them little by little, right? right? So here's a picture that my son drew for me a while back. 
So why not show little pictures of, you know, extraterrestrials? You know, these things start popping out more and more. Why not let them pop out a little bit more? Why not let them show themselves, right? Now, I know there's people that believe in the Palladians, the uh, Dro Drobodans, and, you know, all these other different kind of uh, humanistic-looking uh, creatures out there or, or people uh, of those kind of extraterrestrial. Now, those I haven't seen yet. You know which ones I have seen? Those. These are the ones that we've been seeing, right? <laughs> so, you know, uh, until I see more pictures uh, or more um, more concrete evidence of these, uh, I know Palladians, there, there, there's some that, that come from, that are greys as well. So don't get me wrong, I, I do know that. I just, I would really like to see more of that, you know, the Andromedans or whatever, you know, they're, even the reptilians, man. I, yeah. These things are starting to, pictures are starting to come out more and more now. I know AI is out there. I get it. I get it. I, I've seen the crap out there, you know. And now they're making a new law to where if you are throwing AI, it's going to have to have that little emblem at the bottom or it's not going to allow you to upload it to anywhere, right? That's why I, I don't know if I'm a content creator. So if you go to, if you're going to upload any of your stuff to uh, YouTube or the, and, and ask you, is anything on here AI? We need to know. And you got to check it, you know, if there is, right? Uh, because this is where they're starting to come down on people, which is great, man. It's a great way to do this, right? So uh, anyway, I blabbled enough, and I hope you guys really enjoyed this podcast today on Instagram and on X only, right? Appreciate you guys. You know, please share this podcast. Uh, you know, and we are on Patreon, man. We are go to our Patreon. You can join up for free, freebie, man. And a lot of a lot of my stuff, a lot of uh, my videos will be coming out on Patreon. Um, uh, not on Facebook as much anymore. Uh, go catch our, our Skylight Wood channel. Go look at it there. Uh, there it's going to be on Facebook, but you can actually look for it on, excuse me, you can actually look at it on, on uh, Google it. Good. Skylight One, right? Skylight One. You'll see it pop up. And then you'll see the links to it. I'll actually throw links to it from here, right? So that way you guys don't gonna have to look too far, right? And uh, you know, I appreciate you guys for for watching. You know, just kind of looking at everything that's happening here today. Keep your eyes in the skies, right? Always keep your eyes in the skies. But if you're driving, be careful. Pull over to where it's safe to do so. Get out or have somebody get out of the vehicle, take a photo and a video where it's safe to do so. All right? Don't do it from inside the glass because us as analysis experts or people, man, when you start seeing bugs and smears and then you start seeing reflections from the dash come up, it, it, it's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work. Take your head outside, all right? Or pull over where it's safe to do so. All right? Until then, you guys have yourselves a good day. Have yourselves a good evening. And have yourselves a good night. Don't forget Alien Strand Podcast. Check us out on there.